Welcome to the Moonflower Path Podcast. This space is for the highly sensitive, the creatives, the earth loving, the caregivers, the weirdos, the feelers, the change makers, and dreamers of the world. Here, we are all about guiding you to trust your body intuition so you can find home and shift culture. Through the exploration of somatic practice, self-care, and seasonal ritual, my hope is that you will be inspired to be in harmony with yourself and in a dance with the earth. I'm your host, Carolyn, and I'm so honored and grateful to be here with you today. Hello, lovely listener. Welcome to episode one of the Moonflower Path podcast. This is incredibly exciting. I am so grateful that you are here. Please imagine that I'm giving you the biggest hug, even if we've never met. I've been told that I give pretty good hugs. I'm very grateful for your support because this whole podcast creation thing is not easy stuff. It's vulnerable and has been for me at least a whole year in the making. Not necessarily that I've taken a year to actually make it, but it's taken me a year to muster up the courage to just hit record on a few episodes. So I'm very grateful for your support and thank you for taking in my words. In this episode, we will explore together the why behind the creation of this podcast, a little bit more in terms of what you can expect to hear in this space. I'll introduce myself a little bit and we'll go from there. So let's start with the why of this podcast. I'm a why gal. I always like to know why behind all of the things. So I'd like to shed a little bit of light on the why behind this space. When I first started this business, Yoga with Carolyn, it started as a YouTube channel. I had made some pretty big shifts and decisions in my life, which I'll share more about in more episodes later on in the season, which had led me to know that teaching yoga was where I needed and wanted to focus all of my attention. And not just any yoga, but cozy and accessible yoga. Yoga that was for everybody and that was gentle and calm. Well, as a yoga teacher, it takes a bit of time to acquire classes and studios, let alone fill those classes. And we were right at the beginning of the pandemic, so that wasn't going to happen anyways. So I started the YouTube channel with the help of many friends and family Like my best friend and her partner were helping me with like the tech stuff. My wife was right there um, cheering me along the the courageous steps of putting it all together. I quite literally remember when I like chose the name and created the branding and we were both sitting at the kitchen table. I'm like, okay, here it goes. And my sister helped me with taking a bunch of photos. So uh, it really was this like all hands on deck Let's put this together and see see what comes of it. It was really a way for me to share my skills and my point of view easily and accessibly. It gained traction and the business has grown from there. Now I teach multiple weekly live stream classes and seasonal gatherings to an amazing community. And if you're listening to this and have been with us since day one, Holy moly, I am so grateful for you. We have created magic together, and I cannot wait for this next chapter. I have felt this past year a bit boxed in, a bit stuck. There are things that I want to share, lessons I want to explore further that I talk about in my classes, but that don't get the attention I know they deserve in the few words I say about them in class or even in the newsletters I share. And this is not only like a, like an intuitive nudge inside of myself, but this is really a, a nudge of, I know that these things that I'm feeling called to share about are going to be supportive for the folks that are here and part of this community. So I started a private podcast last winter to the newsletter recipients, and I got such positive feedback on the coziness anchoring and reflection it offered folks that it felt high time to share these types of teachings in a more solid platform like this one (laughs) since then 
I've gone through a real soul searching journey around how I can shift this business as a whole to encompass more space for those other resources and lessons. Other things being the self-care resources, the seasonal living lessons and rituals, the somatic teachings that just don't get touched on in depth in the weekly yoga classes, as well as community and earth connection. So with all those pieces floating around, all those desires inside of me, all those dreams outside of me, I've made the decision to change things around here. The name of this podcast is going to become the new name of the business, The Moonflower Path. Feels really exciting to say that out loud, (laughs) in all honesty. Over the past few months, we'll explore all of that a bit more together. And behind the scenes, I'm hard at work restructuring and redesigning things and other aspects of this space. And in the spring, you can expect to see a new online somatic self-care community space being offered for you. I can't wait to share it all with you. But in the meantime, (laughs) this podcast will serve as the first sprinkling of that new essence of this business the broadening of impact, the solidifying for all of us, which includes you, dear listener, of claiming being highly sensitive, creative, and earth-loving, the deepening of the richness of this community, the expanding of the importance and role we all put on caring for ourselves, our bodies, our gifts, and the earth. The Moonflower Path is a celebration of all of that. There's three main components behind the energy of a moonflower that I would like to explore here with you. Sensitivity, creativity, and earth connection. Moonflowers are white flowers that when they bloom, they open up into a round shape very similar to that of the full moon. The magical and beautifully symbolic nature of the moonflower which its scientific name is Datura inoxia, is that they only blossom in the evening. A reminder that for some, the darkness can be a conduit to thriving. They are delicate and sensitive to small changes in light. If I think of folks who are highly sensitive, there are so many similarities. The commonality of darkness, i.e. struggles with self-doubt, mental health, hiding from the world, and or feeling a little like an outsider. Yet regardless of those facts, regardless of that darkness, the blossoming is equally true, right? It's this recognition that we're not afraid of the dark. The dark is absolutely something that we experience, that we move through, that is present, but it's not a reason to shy away from the light that is also found in the world and also found inside of you. When moonflowers are given the right environment to thrive, they are truly beautiful, just like you. Also, moonflowers are poisonous, and I can't help love the witchy, mischievous vibes of that symbolism. (laughs) Then the, the second point, or the second component, is creativity. Again, if we go back to the last few points, when cared for properly and with love, moonflowers are absolutely gorgeous and come in a wide array of colors. When moonflowers, and again, I'm kind of flip-flopping here, and moonflower could be seen as the actual flower or the person. (laughs) So when moonflowers are given the opportunity to thrive, the result of that is magical and needed. We need more radical beauty in our dark and chaotic world third component, earth connection. Well, I feel like this one is a little bit obvious, but regardless, with the connection between the moon and Datura, there is an acknowledging that we are not separate from the natural world. Not only that, but we are in true relationship, true reciprocal, collaborative, cooperative relationship with the earth. Through caring for ourselves, allowing our creativity and intuition to be explored, a beautiful connection and regenerative relationship can be found with the earth. Your sensitivity 
allows you to be more attuned to the subtle shifts in the rhythms of the seasons, the lunar cycles, and so much more. The more we can learn about the earth, the more we can learn about ourselves, and vice versa. To be in harmony with ourselves is to be in a dance with the earth. Living life as a moonflower means you claim your need for softness, darkness, slowness, intention, creativity, love, care, feeling, magic, connection, and so much more. But there's no destination that we're trying to get to here. There's no finish line. There's no point in time where you'll get to say, Ah, finally, I now know it all. I've now healed everything. I now 100% of the time know how to take care of myself. No, the beauty of life is that it's a path. It's a journey. A path that runs through rocky terrain, vast meadows, has pit stops by the fireside, homesteads along the way to rest, and friends to accompany you along the way. So together, we walk the path of the moonflower. So the the goal with this episode was to introduce myself a little bit, to really shine a light on the why of this space, and then I wanted to end on a little bit more of like a, a practical note and offer you a few prompts to reflect on what comes up for you when I've said all of these words. So these prompts might be ones that you could use to journal, or if you've been part of this community for a little while, you know we love a good journal prompt, but some folks in this space have learned along the way that even if you're not a journaler, it doesn't mean that you can't also be reflective. So maybe you just let the prompts kind of drop in and then see what answers come up as the days go on. So three simple questions for you that are also found in the show notes. What does the word moonflower mean to you? Is it a word that resonates with the way you actually want to live your life? In what ways could you walk towards that part of yourself that lights up when you think of living life as a moonflower? As we wrap up this first episode of the podcast, I just like to kind of shine a light on what the next few weeks together will look like. The next few episodes will be revolving around just creating a bit more context around this new podcast, this new resource, this new exploration that we're going to be moving through together. So the next few episodes will talk about prioritizing self-care. I'll share a little bit more about my own experience. We'll explore somatic practice, self-care, and ritual and how they can each support you. And also sharing a few of my tips on creating safety and comfort in your body within your somatic practices. So that is what is to be explored in the next few episodes and then much more to come. So stay tuned, stick around. If you are excited about the changes that are coming in this space, then please register for the newsletter. Come hang out with me on Instagram, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and let's continue to grow the Moonflower community together. If you enjoyed today's episode, then please consider subscribing to the podcast if you aren't already, rating and reviewing the podcast, because that will help the podcast get into more folks' ears, and share this episode with a friend or two. Thank you so much for being here. I'm so grateful for your time, for your trust in me, and I look forward to connecting with you again very soon.